46th anniversary of the Edmund Fitzgerald the launch. The Edmund Fitzgerald was launched on June 7, 1958, and it was one of the largest. It was the largest lake freighter to sa sail the lakes at the time. It was also the first maximum size lake freighter built at the time. And it was 728 feet long, and it was the largest freighter on the lakes for 13 years. The beginning. The Edmund Fitzgerald's maiden voyage was on September 24, 1958. She also sets many records, and after breaking her own records, Chester became very popular and got a few nicknames like the Big Fitz, Mighty Fitz, Pride of the American Side, Toledo Express, and even the Titanic of the Great Lakes. Final Voyage On the 9th of November, 1975, the Edmund Fitzgerald set out on a routine voyage from Wisconsin to Zug Island and she is lo loaded with cargo of iron ore pellets. The Edmund Fitzgerald departed at 2.15 p.m. PM and at the time the weather was fair and the storm was due in the next morning, but they expected to pass on by towards the south, so they did not think about the storm. Five hours later, the National Weather Service said the storm would be would bring gale force winds to the whole of the lake speed, which is like the middle kind of area. When the captain Ernest M. McSorley heard about the update, he ordered a change of direction, steering the fits towards the Canadian shore of the lake. By 1 a.m. on the 10th of November, the Edmund Fitzgerald was plowing through the harsh storm. The winds blew more at more than 50 miles per hour, and the waves were more than 10 feet high, 33 meters, <coughs> as, this, as they smashed against the bow of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Morning came on, the storm continued to age on. At 2.45 p.m. that day, snow began to fall, making it more challenging and has also reduced visibility. At 3.30 p.m., Captain McSorley radioed the SS Arthur M. Anderson, which was another nearby freighter, which also followed, was, was also following the same, cor same course as the Fitzgerald, which was 10 miles behind, 16 kilometers behind. This is the message she sent to the Anderson. Anderson, this is the Fitzgerald. I have a fence rail down, two vents lost or damaged, and a list. I'm checking down. Will you stay by me until I get to Whitefish? Later around 7 10 p.m., the fits made, made on board the author M. Wait a minute. Sorry. Later around 7 10 p.m., the first mate on board the author M. Anderson checked on, in on Captain McSorley. He asked, By the way, Fitzgerald, how are you making out with your problems? Captain McSorley replied, We are holding our own. That message would be the last time that they had any type of communication with Edmund Fitzgerald. The crew of the author M. Anderson tried to radio the Fitz multiple times, but could not get a hold of them, the Fitz, and could not see the freighter on the radar. They contacted the Coast Guard to express concern and then say the Edmund Fitzgerald was missing. By 9 p.m., the Arthur M. Anderson made it to Whitefish Bay, which is between Michigan and Ontario. Later on, the, later on, the Coast Guard later on the Coast Guard asked Arthur M. Anderson to come back out into the storm to help look for the Fitz. At first, the captain was worried about him, his ship sinking and taking on damage out there, but he decided to go back. The only thing they found was a smashed-up lifeboat and some other debris from the Edmund Fitzgerald. After many, after many ships searched the waters of Lake Superior for many hours, they eventually concluded that the Edmund Fitzgerald had sunk. There are many questions about how the freighter sank, and how there was no distress signals, and how not a single crew member survived. After many years, there are still no answers, only theories. The catch was discovered five days after the sinking, and has been surveyed many times. They found out that the ship split into two pieces, and some say it fractured under the stress while on the surface, but others strongly disagree like me. Most think it was swamped by a series of massive rogue waves. <clears throat> All of the 29 crew members died in the sinking, and they stopped going to the wreck because they found a body near the bow, and they declared the wreck a gravesite. Rest in peace to all 29 crew members who lost their lives that day. 